Hello and welcome to another unlockyoursound.com tutorial with myself Chris Cavallio. In this tutorial we're going to talk about mastering and I'm going to show you how I mastered a real life client track. Uh, shout out to Gerald Deschenes for uh, letting me showcase his uh, music in this. So again this is a real life client project and uh, I've just opened it and um, just to demonstrate to you, just to kind of break down and reverse engineer uh, my process for mastering. This is a good example because the chain that I used is, is fairly basic um, and I want to cover the basic stuff. Now, there are fundamentally um, two concepts in mastering, or maybe three actually, that you kind of need to really think about quite hard. Um, and those are EQ, loudness, and dynamics. And they are all related. Now, loudness is important. When I say it's important, I don't mean that maximum loudness is important. I mean that finding the loudness sweet spot, the optimal loudness for the music, will define the right dynamics and the EQ. And let me explain. So as you can see here, I've got a chain. Now, I've got a gain stage. I've got TDR Nova, which is an EQ. Um, I've got Slate Digital, which is actually, it's a clipper. Uh, so I'll come back to that. I've got a gain stage again. I've got a limiter, a limiter, and a gain stage. Now, why do I have so many limiters? Well, to be honest, I only really have one limiter or two because again these two are limiters and that one's a clipper the reason I've got two limiters is this one is not doing any gain and I'll explain why that is but this one is to limit the sample peaks you see there's true peak detection off I'll explain that in a moment as well and the adaptive limiter here is my intersample peak limiter um, with true peak detection on there, again, zero gain. Okay, um, now let's just turn that limiter and this last gain stage off for a moment because this is kind of how I work. I work into this limiter first. Now, the reason that this limiter has zero gain on it is because I'm actually driving the gain via a gain stage going before it. Now, the first thing that I do when I'm mastering a track is... I find the loudness or I start to approach the right loudness for the music. Now, as a mastering engineer, I use a fixed monitoring level, which allows me to measure dynamics, EQ and loudness by ear. And I have a blog about that. I'll leave that in the, the, the description. Um, so what I do is I make up a basic chain like this. I actually have a template that sets up a basic chain like this. And the first thing I do is I have the limiter on and I just start turning it up. And as I start turning it up, my brain can measure the dynamics, my brain can measure the EQ fairly. And as you start to turn it up, any kind of inconsistencies in the sound, any odd things that might hit the ceiling randomly throughout the track will start to crop up and those will start to define what EQ movements and what dynamic movements that you make. But also, as you turn it up to your monitoring level, your listening level, um, because you've been working at that listening level for periods of time, for long periods of time over long uh, passages of listening to music, your brain will start to internalize what good sounds like. Because as you turn things up or down, your perception of EQ and dynamics is completely different. So it's important that we actually attain loudness first, but we actually attain it later in the chain as opposed to earlier in the chain. So that's why I've got this gain stage here because I turned it up. Um, but also um, in Slate Digital FGX, which again is a, is a clipper, I've got some gain going on here as well, but I'll come back to that. So I got to gain, and as I start to approach the right loudness, my brain starts to go, okay, this is what needs to happen in terms of EQ. You know, as I turned it up, I was noticing that, for example, this band was a little bit loud, so I pulled that down. So you're actually kind of working backwards. At first, you're working backwards into the chain and mastering, and then you're kind of cycling through it. You, you turn up the gain, and then you do a bit of EQ, and then you go back 
you turn up the gain a bit more, you adjust the gain until you just hit the sweet spot. Until you, it feels and sounds loud and the dynamics are there. You can hear everything, but it's not fatiguing and it's just at a comfortable listening level. So that's kind of what it's like. You 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 cycle through the EQ, the gain, the limiting and back again. Now this EQ that I'm using, TDR Nova, it's a, it's a very special one because it's actually, it's not just an EQ, it's, it's a dynamic EQ. So to best demonstrate that actually, I might as well just play a part of the song. So let's come over to here. This is a great song by the way. Not broken, try to hear the world through ears, not dead. Okay, so let's stop there for a moment. You see this band here? Um, it's actually a dynamic band, which means I activated the threshold and turned the threshold down so it actually is compressing that band depending on how loud the signal is in that band, which which is really, really good because it allows you to solve inconsistent EQ problems without affecting the overall EQ too much. So when the the level inside that band exceeds the threshold, it starts to push it down, which means you can just EQ bands independently and you can basically achieve a more transparent compression because of that. But like I said, as you start to turn things up, as you start to approach the right loudness for the music, you'll start to notice these things and you'll solve those problems earlier in the chain using tools like TDR Nova or any, maybe a multiband compressor or, or even just a compressor and an EQ combination. Um, because of that, because TDR Nova is effectively working as a compressor for me, it's just a sort of band independent processor, uh, compressor. I don't actually have a compressor in this mastering chain. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but I find that compressors actually help me with the limiting. So the compressor kind of works with the limiter and it kind of like, it might tuck a peak around the, the odd peak underneath the ceiling of the compressor just to afford me that, that extra sort of gain going back into the limiter without distortion and stuff like that. But that's mainly what the TDR Nova is doing right now. Um, this is the gentleman's edition, that's what they call it, of TDR Nova. There is also a free version of TDR Nova, which is, to be honest, probably 75% as powerful. Um, this one just has more features, but the just getting that free one is just... it. For me, it's my mastering Swiss Army knife. It's so many um, plugins all in one. So yeah, I mean, and it's as simple as that in terms of basic chain. You know, you, you attain level, you bring it up to your loudness. Again, working at a fixed monitoring level um, is very, very important in mastering. I'm, you know, I don't change the play the playback gain on my system. It's always at the same level. And I calibrated that actually using Spotify. And again, I've got some links uh, to some blogs that I wrote about that, about the benefits and how to set that up in the uh, description of this video. So now I'm going to continue on into why I've got the different limiters and, and that last gain stage. Now, this is this chain, like I said, is normally where I'm working. And then towards the end of my process, I... Try to speak the words, not often I start to turn on these effects. So like... This one, it's not going to have a drastic effect on the sound. Um, I did have the sensation that it slightly turned it down a bit, which is absolutely fine because it's estimating what the intersample peaks are going to be um, once it's converted to analog. Because if you the intersample peaks are basically what the peak values are going to be between the samples after it's been converted into a continuous analog signal. I implore you to read up more about intersample peaks. Um, so the fact that that's got true peak detection on and I turn it on and it seems a little bit quieter, that's absolutely fine. I could turn up the gain a little bit, but in this example, I didn't, I probably actually worked into that limiter being on, so I didn't actually lose out anything, but either way is absolutely fine. Now this is uh, going out to a true peak ceiling of zero, but my masters don't actually leave here in unless they have a minus, uh, one true peak value, meaning that they have one decibel of true peak uh, headroom in them. And like I said, I work into those limiters, one or two of them, and then at the end, I just turn it down by one dB. That last gain stage is one dB. It just turns it down and gives that uh, headroom without actually affecting the dynamics because 
any gain movement doesn't affect the dynamics. It just turns it up or down in a linear fashion. So that is basically it. I've got some uh, metering plugins here. So let's have a look at those. Um, Again, trying to see the light forgotten people. So this is Klanghelm Vumpt. I have it on RMS mode. That's just what I'm used to, AES RMS mode. And uh, my masters, in terms of the loudest parts, normally hover around the minus 12 and minus 8 RMS there. Uh, you can frequency weight it as well. You can have different frequency filters to... Uh, way to weigh the RMS weighting favorably against um, frequencies that you can hear more than others but I don't really worry too much about that again I'm in a fixed monitoring environment I'm very confident in what my ears my ears are doing so I just keep an eye on the uh, RMS levels using that and I quite like the VU needle intuitive nature of that so I just keep an eye on that I also have Brainworks BX meter for monitoring the microdynamics of the material. You go, you go. Again, just like with all meters, this is kind of a sanity check. I kind of just check it, check these things. I'm not looking out for anything in particular, but there might be a warning sign that I didn't think about and it just guides what I'm hearing. That's what meters are for. They're not They're not there to tell you what to do. They're not there to uh, give you a number to aim for because that doesn't really work, but they do guide what you are hearing. They're in a they're supplement to your ears, if that makes sense. Um, I've also got Ulean loudness meter. Which gives me short-term integrated uh, LUFS levels, loudness units relative to full scale. If you don't know what the, don't know what those are, um, then I would read up on those. Um, they're fairly important, um, but uh, the right LUFS is also material dependent as well. Um, I do have a, a couple of links regarding um, what the platforms are doing in terms of loudness management, but the right loudness is is actually material dependent and not and not platform dependent. So, if you find the right loudness, you find the right dynamics, you find the right EQ, and where that ends up on the scale isn't too important as long as you're not as long as you're not pursuing maximum loudness. You're pursuing optimal loudness for the material. It doesn't matter if YouTube or Spotify turn it down; it'll still sound good because they'll just play it back at the same level as anything else anyway. It's only if you pursue maximum loudness and you compromise the actual audio of what you're working on um, that that becomes a problem because if YouTube turn it down and again they don't they don't compress the material in terms of dynamics you know they just turn it down like using a linear thing so if you find that you're mastering stuff and YouTube turn it down and it sounds bad it's because it sounded bad in the first place um, you just didn't know that because it was just loud you know so that's why working to a fixed monitoring level is important um, and that's why pursuing the optimal loudness for the material is important as well. But Ulean loudness meters, it's good to look at. Again, these things just guide your ears. And I also use Logic's multimeter. Lots of useful information in Logic's multimeter. And uh, I use also use Foxengo span. Very intuitive to uh, as a way of analyzing the general dis distribution of energy across the frequency spectrum. Um, I'm just looking for any nasty surprises. I'm not looking for anything in particular. You generally want an even response throughout, but that's also material dependent. You know, it doesn't have to be exactly flat. You have to respect the material and you have to trust what you're hearing above all and just let these things guide your ears as opposed to replace them in any single way. Look for your shangri Obviously, if this was like a, you know, a heavy EDM track, you'd probably expect a sort of flatter sort of response across the frequency spectrum here, but everything is material dependent. Okay, so just to summarise, guys, you know, finding the loudness sweet spot, you should, you should find the loudness sweet spot, you should care about loudness, 
but what you shouldn't be caring about is maximum loudness you should be finding the right loudness and just cycling through the chain will get there increase the loudness and then discover you know work backwards into the chain do i need to compress it a bit more do i need to tighten up the dynamics do i need to pull in that muddy frequency because it's interfering with the loudness potential pull it in afford yourself a bit more gain and then just find the sweet spot i promise you if you keep hacking away at that principle just gain compression and eq or gain dynamic eq and limiting um you know cycling through that basic chain will help you get there and to be honest if you're just starting out just to gain eq compression and limiting and just keep keep adding the gain but working backwards and finding a sweet spot um also i have a uh, a mastering course out if you'd like to get a huge discount on that just click on the coupon link in the description where i tackle things like loudness limiting compression eq and much much greater detail it's aimed at logic pro users but anyone um, who's interested in learning mastering will get huge value out of it it's going a lot of people are getting value out of it and they're becoming more confident in creating great masters at home also go to unlockyoursound.com you can get free mixed feedback from me and my team you can sign up for my free live mastering workshops and if you have any questions or concerns at all just give me a shout i want to help you make better masters and be more confident in creating masters for your music so that when you come to distribute them when you come to you know showcase them to the world you can be confident that they are shining the light on the best qualities of your music and your music sounds great everywhere Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.